Good morning. <laughs> that was wonderful, wasn't it? Welcome to worship. Good morning and welcome to Croydon Citadel. Whether you're joining us in person here in the hall, and it's lovely to see you, those we haven't seen for a while, and or if you're joining us online. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, wrote this. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. So that's what we're going to do as we start our meeting today. We're going to sing and we're going to worship God in song. And we're going to start by singing with the band song number 401. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the land, that all men might see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. I'm going to invite you to stand. The band are going to help us and we're going to sing together. Thank you, Van. Please be seated. Yes. Hallelujah. We are going to continue in this mood of singing. Uh, this is my desire to honor you, Lord. With all my heart, I worship you. I give you praise. I adore you. As we lift Jesus' name, uplift for all this to see, we, all want, we also want to declare our own desire to honor the Lord and to worship and to live for him alone. Let us join in singing together this song that is 397 in our songbook and Maggie is going to help us on the piano. Thank you.
Lord, have your way in me. Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. God is at work in us, his purpose to perform, building a kingdom of power, not of words. Where things impossible by faith shall be made possible. Amen. Let us give the glory all to him. These are the words of the song 389. And with this, we continue to, to rejoice, to sing. Uh, and now we are going to be accompanied by the band. So it is a bright and happy song. So please stand if you can so we can sing it better. It's 389, the, the song. finalize this time which a uh, beginning of time of worship with a beautiful chorus as we are gathered Jesus is here in our worship in our praise strengthening and guiding us along the way as we meet together and then go out as his people lovely words to finalize this period of praise and worship as we start our meeting in the presence of the Lord today. Thank you, Lord.
us pray. O oh Lord, we come here this morning, first of all, to worship you and to say that we have come to be here with you in your presence. You are a holy God and we need you in our lives, in our families, in our day to day. Give us, Lord, once more all that you know we need for today because you have all we need. Many things have happened since the last time we were here together and we are aware of the things we have done wrong since we last met. Forgive us for our, our wrongdoings. Things that we said that may, maybe we shouldn't have done. Difficulties in our relationships. And help us to forgive what others have done against us also. There are so many things going on in our lives and we confess our inability to deal with them by ourselves without falling short of doing the right thing. So we want to be faithful to you and obedient to your will for us. We want to honor you in all we do. So bless us, Lord, during this time. We are together in your house. May your Holy Spirit have freedom to reach out to each one of us, making us stronger in our faith, making us stronger so that we do not fall into temptation, making us stronger to live a life that glorifies your name and that binds us together so that we can move forward as your people in your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are not going to listen to the message of the songsters. We are always pleased to have the songsters with us. And they are going to sing a very appropriate song for us today, this morning. A lovely song, one mission, one message. And then Ben is going to come and bring us the Bible reading for this morning. Thank you, Sanctus, for your ministry this morning. <coughs> Thank you. 
The Bible reading is taken from John 3, verses 25 to 30. The bridegroom's friend. After this conversation, Jesus went on with his disciples into the Judean countryside and relaxed with them there. He was also baptizing. At the same time, John was baptizing over at Aeon near Salim, where water was abundant. This was before John was thrown into jail. John's disciples got into an argument with the establishment Jews over the nature of baptism. They came to John and said, Rabbi, you know the one who was with you on the other side of, of the Jordan, the one you authorized with your witness. Well, he's now competing with us. He's baptizing too, and everyone's going to him, in, him instead of us. John answered, it is not possible for a person to succeed. I'm talking about eternal success. Without heaven's help, you yourselves were there when I made it public that I was not the Messiah, but simply the one sent ahead of him to get things ready. The one who gets the bride is, by definition, the bridegroom, and the bridegroom's friend, his best man, that's me, in place at his side where he can hear every word, is genuinely happy. How could he be jealous when he knows that the wedding is finished and the marriage is off to a good start. That's why my cup is running over. This is the assigned moment for him to move into the center while I slip off to the sidelines. Thank you very much, Ben. It's a very special text we choose, especially the message version because it comes alive, this text for us this morning. We will be coming back to that reading a little later in our meeting. Now we will listen to the message of the band, who are going to bring us an arrangement called Light of the World. Thank you very much, band, for your ministry.
Thank you very much, Van, for your ministry this morning towards us. Lovely arrangement. We will now receive your offering as we listen to the music played kindly for Ma by Mark on the piano, and then Nigel will come and pray with us. Thank you for your offering. <clears throat> Our children then will leave now for the Sunday school. Thank you. Thank you very much for your giving this morning. Um, just a couple of verses from Ephesians chapter 5. When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God the Father for everything. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you. We thank you because you do give us so much. We thank you that from what you have given us, we can give back to you what is rightfully yours. And we pray, Lord, that the people that have given this morning and in many other ways during other times, that you will bless them. Um, and we pray, Lord, for the people that will receive. There are so many needs in this community. And we pray, Lord, for those that help meet those needs here in the community centre here. And we pray for those that receive that they will also receive something of you. We ask this in and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elijah. Before we listen to the message, this morning we are going to sing together another song, song number 349. A beautiful song written by General Albert Osborne that invites us once again to join together in thanking and praising God and reminds us that all of us are to be involved in God's mission as part of his church. Here we have the words. We're going to be led by the band. So let us stand, please, if you can, and sing together all these three verses straight through this band. Thank you.
lovely words. Thank you for this great singing. Please be seated. Thank you. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Lovely song. Thank you to the band and the songsters for your ministry today that have blessed us. Over the first, the last, sorry, over the last couple of years, the first years that we've been here, the last couple of years, various groups in the core have been meeting together to think about our mission and to try to begin to lay out a plan for the future of Croydon Citadel in our present context. They've been asking themselves questions such as, what is our place? What is our history in this place? What is the present reality? Are we in the right location? What impact do we have on this community? Who do we want to reach out to? What do people know about us? Etc. Etc. All very valued questions that have helped our reflection, and we have seen God's hand guiding us throughout this process. And this has been a journey with a variety of people over a period of time. But one phrase just kept cropping up. Things have changed. Things have changed. People have changed. The core has changed. The sections have changed. The home league has changed. The area around the core has changed. The high street has changed. Croydon has changed. It's all change. And in our thinking and conversations about all of this, there's been a constant nagging question at the back of our minds. How can Croydon Salvation Army continue to be relevant in our community now? We have a wonderful history. We've been here for over 150 years, folks, and we've celebrated that, both in the 150th anniversary celebrations, which unfortunately we do not have the pleasure of being part of, but as well as in subsequent years at various core anniversary weekends. The Salvation Army in the UK and Ireland has also set out some very clear points for us. We have our vision statement, fullness of life for all in Jesus. We have our focus areas of mission, sharing the good news, serving others, nurturing disciples of Jesus, caring for creation, and seeking justice and reconciliation. And we have our motto, love God, love others, it comes on all our emails. It's all great stuff, and it's all what we want to do. So we have these things to guide and to help us, but the fact is we still need to find a way of being relevant in an ever-changing multicultural community. Isn't that right? That's what we want, isn't it? It's a big task. <laughs> it's a big task trying to bring all these things together. And you may just be sat there thinking, well, what has that got to do with me? That's the officer's problem. I'm not the leader of the corps. I just come on Sunday and sit here and take it all in. Well, I would say to you that if we are going to be a church that is relevant in this community, we need everybody in. We need to all be in it all together. Everyone needs to be part of it. Wherever you live, whatever your background, whatever your culture, whatever your age, everyone needs to move forward together. That's our word. We have it here always. Together. Together. We need to go and move together. Now since Edgar and I arrived in the UK, we've learned a lot of new things. Not only the language, which we're still, you know, fighting with daily, a daily battle but many other things as well. And one of them is all about risk assessments, isn't it, David? It's all about risk assessment. There's risk assessments for everything. Now, it's not that in Latin America we don't do risk assessments. We do, but they're very um, fluid, let's put it that way. There's a common agreement and understanding that's in place, and everybody knows what it is, but it's not written down on a piece of paper with 100 signatures, let's put it that way. So when we write out our risk assessments, and thanks to David and to Sajata that keep us on the straight and narrow about this all the time, we try to bring to mind all that we need to be aware of, 
all that can go wrong, all that can cause us not to reach our goal. So we're going to take a few moments to think about some of the things that we may need to be aware of and keep in mind when we're thinking about being a church that is relevant in this community now. First of all, in the urge to be relevant, we need to be reminded that there are some pitfalls along the way. Other churches seem to have fallen into some of those. Look at the churches, for example, mentioned in the book of Revelation. The church in Ephesus, for example. This was a doctrinally solid and active church, but they'd lost their first love, their original fervor, and become cold. They had allowed their service to God to become mechanical, like a a ritual. They'd lost their focus of the first basic commandment, to love God with all their heart. And when a church stops loving God with all their heart, he is no longer the focus. So the mission is lost. Even if everything is functioning exceedingly well, like clockwork from the human point of view. Then there's the church in Sardis. The great thing about this church was that it had had a great reputation, but it no longer lived up to it. It was resting on its past glories. Now, the church is a living organism, and it only remains alive due to its present authentic service to God. It can't be relevant if it tries to project a false image based on what it used to be or previous reputation. And then there's the church in Laodicea. Now, if self-confidence were the norm, this church would stand out. It had great self-confidence. It was practically self-sufficient, so much so that it had left the Lord himself outside knocking on the door, asking to get back into his own church. Arrogance, prosperity, and self-confidence frequently produce Christians that put their trust in human capacity rather than in divine intervention. And at the end of his comment about all the churches that John had seen in his vision come some important words. And it says, if you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Each one of these churches was relevant to a certain extent in their context. But they were all warned about the pitfalls they had fallen into. And so to each church, there was the challenge of accepting the need to change what had to be changed so that they could continue to be relevant in their various contexts. (coughs) There's another thing that can happen. As humans, sometimes we do get carried away, some more than others. In the search for relevance, in our present times, we can be tempted to let our human feelings take over. We can constantly be looking at other churches, other Salvation Army Corps even, and we can become obsessed about having the most updated this and the best of that. We feel we need to follow all the new trends and to be seen to be modern, acceptable, attractive, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be upbeat and with it, nothing at all. We just need to be aware that this can be a pitfall. All these things are important. They help with the mission. But they don't need to take center stage. Because the focal point is the work of the Holy Spirit and the saving grace that only Jesus Christ can offer to transform lives. Many times what starts out as a genuine concern about the relevance of the church in projecting an image of being a church that is in harmony with the present cultural context and that wants to use all the means to better communicate the truth of the gospel can end up giving a false image of a church that promotes the people that do all this good work and casts a shadow on the main characters, God in Jesus Christ and his grace and the work of regeneration of the Holy Spirit that needs to be happening in the church. So we need to be careful that our abilities and our own capacities don't become more obvious to people than the gospel truths and the values that should, we should demonstrate in our daily lives. Otherwise, what we do becomes more important than who we are. 
We get carried away with other things. Another pitfall that carries us away in our human journey is that we can be involved too much in our own internal affairs, our own pride, our own way of doing things, our organisation, our own standards, and even our internal conflicts and nicknags. This very week in our Wednesday Bible study group, we were considering the first chapters of Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And we were saying how Paul starts off his letter with wonderful words of encouragement to the Christians there. Remember, the church at this time was very young. It wasn't 150 years old. It wasn't even 15 years old. But after saying what he says and encouraged them, he goes into the nitty-gritty of all the problems that they're facing. Who's following who and who thinks this teaching is better and who liked the previous person and who wants to be better than someone else, etc., etc. And then he goes into questions of behaviour and family life and deals with how the church, church, church folk relate to those around them and their life in the church and so on. Internal affairs. So much going on amongst the people in the church that they get distracted from the church being relevant in the community. But then the church is made up of human beings, isn't it? Hence all these things can become a focal point and a pitfall for our relevance. But in our urge to be relevant, we, are mind, we need to be reminded also that Christ is the central figure. That's the most important thing to remember. Christ is the central figure of the church. One of the most relevant texts to help us in this reflection is the one that Ben read to us from John chapter 3, when John the Baptist is asked by his disciples about his own importance. And his answer is very clear. Conscious of who he is and of his mission, he concludes his answer saying that this is the assigned moment for him, Christ, to move into the centre, while I, says John, slip off to the sidelines. Or in another version, he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Or maybe a well-known translation in your mind, he must increase and I must decrease. Once again, human pride is at the forefront of this conversation. John's disciples are hurt by the fact that there seems to be competition on the block. Is this Right? And if we return to our key text in John 3 and John the Baptist's answer to the questions asked by his disciples about his own importance, we will see that he starts off by saying, it's not possible for a person to succeed, I'm talking about eternal success, without heaven's help. You yourselves were there when I made public that I was not the Messiah, but simply the one that sent ahead of him to get things ready, says John the Baptist. So John was clear about his identity and mission. And that was because he had an authentic and profound relationship with God. In other words, John the Baptist said that he was not meant to do more than fulfill his role, which was to be the one that has been sent ahead of the Messiah. Now, in this search for relevance, we need to be aware of the danger of valuing, valuing more what is being done as part of the mission than God's mission itself. Sometimes, even our passion for the army can get in the way. We can be led to seek recognition and admiration for all that we do, more than focusing and being obedient and faithful to God's calling to preach the gospel to all people including those that have come from abroad, those from other cultures, immigrants, refugees, those around us. Our focus to be relevant should always be to lead all people to the one who can give life in all its fullness, Jesus. Our part is to love God and to love those who God loves, everybody, not to get recognition for it. Especially because many times we are called to love those that we don't really love. And we use the, God, the love that God has poured into our hearts by his mercy to be able to love those people too. John the Baptist's important lesson to his disciples that day serves us well. We need to be careful not to be so worried about our own relevance that we do not give Christ his rightful place and we reverse things to the point that he decreases so that we 
can increase. So there's many pitfalls, pitfalls to being relevant. But ultimately, the main thing is to make sure that Jesus Christ is central to all we do, that he is exalted, that he is glorified. Because a relevant church is the one that promotes the reconciliation of all God's creatures with him through Jesus Christ. Like John the Baptist, we are not the Christ. We serve and proclaim the Christ. Like John, we too are the people that continue to prepare the way for Christ to be here amongst us. And God doesn't ask of us more than that. But, but, we are called to be his church and to be the best we can be for him. It should be the desire of our hearts to see the lives of children, men and women transformed by God. And this is what should move us forward and make us relevant in this generation and in this wonderfully multicultural context of Croydon. So may God help us to do just that. We're going to listen to a song that's going to be sung to us now. Rhoda's going to come and she's going to lead us and sing to us the words of song 578. And they say, Christ of glory, Prince of peace, let thy life in mine increase. Though I live, may it be shown, tis thy life and not my own. Dwell within that men may see Christ the living Christ in me. And after she's sung, we're going to listen to the music that will be played on the piano, on instruments, and we have the privilege of having a time of personal prayer, the opportunity to think things over in our mind, how each one of us put Christ more and more to the forefront of our lives so that collectively the mission is accomplished and we are the church that God would have us be. If you would like to come and use the place of prayer, it's always, always open. And we need to feel free to be able to do that. So thank you, Rhoda. And after that, we'll continue. Thank you very much. Lord this is our prayer this morning that others may see you in us not us but you through us 
and as your people in this place, together, showing you to others, we may be relevant in this community where you've placed us. Thank you, Lord, because you dare to use us, even though we're human, even though many times we fall into these pitfalls along the way. But thank you because you have a mighty mission for this call, for this place, for us. We just pray, Lord, that we may take hold of the opportunities that you are giving us to do what you would have us do. Thank you, Lord, because you go before us. You are our strength. We only do what we do because you are with us. And we pray that you may continue to be the center of everything in our lives. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to sing that song together. I'm going to stand. It's song 578 as we bring our thoughts to a conclusion at this time. Christ of glory, Prince of peace. Let's sing together. Thank you. Christ of glory, Prince of peace. We pray it for ourselves. We pray it for our church. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, Father. Now, we do have a few announcements today, and we hope you've received this week's bulletin. If not, please let myself or Edgar know. There are printed copies in the foyer if you would like to take one. Please note that slowly we're moving towards showing the announcements on the screen before the meeting. So if you picked up something already, that's very good. 
That's going to be our new feature for the coming weeks. And in the bulletin, you'll find information about our online activities during this week. So don't be shy. Feel free to join. You're always welcome to join one of our Bible study groups or prayer meetings. They're open to everybody, and the details are there. Well, the Home League meet on Wednesday at 10 a.m. for tea and coffee, and their theme this week is independence. And, before, and we also have the Bible study group on Wednesday that's coming up on the screen there. Thank you, Graham. That will be at 12. That's our new Bible study group. You're welcome to come and join. And we have the Home League with their theme, Independence. That's all on Wednesday. Then on Friday, we have the Men's Fellowship. Um, they're also meeting. They have a monthly um, event, and all men are invited to attend. Yeah, they look happy there, don't they? I hope they're happy when they come to Men's Fellowship too. I would think they are, because I've heard good things about Men's Fellowship, so please come and join. We're still in the midst of our Challenge 50. And... Um, as most of you know, before we used to go collecting in treacherous snow and sleet. Do you remember that? Yes. Shows your age, eh? <laughs> yes, we did. Edgar and I went collecting in Liverpool Middlesbrough. and Middlesbrough. Oh, it was freezing. Snow this much. So everybody used to say, isn't this ridiculous? Why don't we collect at another time of the year? Why are we doing this in the middle of the snow? Why? Da, 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 da. And it, all that snow and all that collecting and all those door-to-doors and all those dogs that used to chase us and all those things that you remember as you open the gate and etc., etc. many years ago, um, at the end we used to bring it all in and then bring our own offering and, and etc. So now that's all changed. In February, we do still bring our offering, but we don't so much now go door to door because most people don't want junk, as they call it, through their door, do they? In fact, there's signs outside saying, no junk mail, please. So envelopes through doors don't really work too much nowadays. So we need to find alternatives to that. And that is why we have our collecting on the high street and we have our challenge 50 to help us to work with our community to see what funds we can raise. That's how important it is. Um, we are aware that the situation in our town centre has also changed a lot. And we can't do door-to-door -door collecting, so we need to find other methods. So I hope you're able to participate. The Parkers have certainly done their bit. They've held their afternoon teas in their neighbourhood. Others are doing their part. Stuart, there you are, Stuart. Stuart Fincham has apple and blackberry crumble available. Yes, and the kids have their little boxes that they're getting today, but you can also take one if you want to fill up with coins. That's also another way of helping. There's leaflets there that you can take, and if you have people that would like to make a donation and you don't want them to give you the money, well, there's envelopes as well. But we do need to work hard on our big collection. Um, most of the money raised is going to projects that are going to happen here in our quorum. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to share with you this morning very quickly a video about what happens with our money from the big collection and what other people are doing about it as well. So let's watch together. Thank you, Gray. Something different is going on at Norwich Citadel. And it comes in small to medium or medium to large. We're trying to find different ways to raise funds and so we thought that why not have a fashion show and this would be something different that would encourage people to come along and spend their money and the money that is raised goes towards the work that we do and our social work. Norwich Citadel has been raising funds for the Salvation Army's big collection for many years but this year there's a new focus on connection connection between the vital social work the Salvation Army is doing and the army of people who are working hard to raise money. And to reflect that change, the Big Collection is now called the Big Connection. Big or small, every activity counts in raising money to help the people who are most in need. At Shawcore, they're going for something more traditional, a strawberry afternoon tea. 
Today we decided to do a strawberry tea. We do quite a few social events during the year and this one particularly was for the Big Connection and it was a good chance for people not only to raise funds but also to meet together. There was a lot of chattering going on today, a lot of catching up on old friends, a lot of sharing together and just having a good time. A lot of social work's needed and uh, it needs to be funded somehow. And so this is a good opportunity for people who support the army throughout the year to say, well, this is something I can do and actually contribute financially to the things that the Salvation Army are doing. Morning, Michael. Morning, Tracy. Back in Norwich, as well as raising funds, the Citadel also gets involved in preparing sandwiches for Pottergate Park, the local day centre, which supports people experiencing homelessness in the area. We are a day centre and we work primarily with people experiencing homelessness and that can range from people sleeping on the streets up to temporary accommodation until they get a secure tenancy. We meet a lot of basic needs for people which is feeding, clothing, we have washing facilities, we have support with our charity shop from down the road. I like the guys that come in here, I've got a lot of passion for working with them. They're a very misunderstood group of people and if you get to know them, they're wonderful, they've got wonderful stories to tell. If somebody's in a difficult position, you know, if they just come in here and have a chat, have a sit down, you know, there's always something they can do. I think as a man it's hard to ask for help, there's the pride thing and sometimes you've got to just swallow that down, suck it up and say I need help. People are here or they'll point you in the direction to get the help you want. It would be lovely to see some of the guys from the church come here and see what they're fundraising and what they support. Um, as it happens into action because they are saving, it's saving lives. We save people's lives here. Whatever way you raise funds, however big or small, you will make a real difference to people like Jim and Max. All of the money that is raised for the Big Connection helps the Salvation Army in its social work. So that might be in their life houses, in residential centres, in their centres where people have addictions and they're trying to help them, or at a local core level where they're doing something within the community. It's all a case of integrating everything together. But we need to have it today as well, where we're not just um, you know, isolated, we have to be involved in the community. Fantastic. So the money we raise is going to go to Employment Plus and Anti-Human Trafficking, because those two social programmes function here in our own place. And if you want to check it out, did you see the lady said, oh, I wish the core folk would come and see. Well, core folk, if you want to come and see, this Thursday, we've got the Employability and Community Fair happening from Employment Plus here on Thursday. You're invited to come, come and check it out, see what they do, see if it's worthwhile. But please continue to raise our funds so that we can... Um, help these different Salvation Army projects. It's so important. So if you haven't taken on your challenge yet, think about it. We've got another two weeks to go. We finish on the 29th. If you need a sheet to sponsor because you're going to um, jump off the top of the, of the hall or if you're going to run or if you're going to whatever you're going to do, please see me. We've got sponsorship forms, everything that you need to make sure that we're able to participate. Or just take a box if that's something you can do. Anyway, back today to today, we'll have tea and coffee and chat in the community hall after this meeting. Please join us if you can. The flowers today are given by Alex in celebration of her birthday. Thank you, Alex, so much. Thank you, thank you. There will be an open air. We invite you to join us, please, if you can, and are able to be at the open air. That would be excellent to have you with us. And the youngsters meet tonight, 6 p.m. at my house. You're all invited to be there if you are a youngster. Um, 6 o'clock, and we're meeting in the garden to make the most of the last of the summer sun. You thought I was going to say the summer wine. No, it's the summer sun, the last of the summer sun, we're hopefully today. And now as we leave this place, I invite you to stand and we're going to sing together our benediction today. Give to Jesus glory, give to Jesus glory, proclaim redemption's wondrous plan and give to Jesus glory. That's our objective. 
that he may increase, that he be in control of all that we do. So let's sing our benediction together, give to Jesus glory. We're going to sing it twice because it's so short, it will go quickly. So we'll sing it twice, please, band. Thank you very much. the honour and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Please join us for coffee. It's lovely to be with you this morning.